howdy folks welcome back to the workshop got another fun project for you today now a couple weeks ago i posted a video about making a diddly bow in 10 minutes and i'll go ahead and link that in the description if you didn't see that one but um here it is right here and i just took a plank and a few things that i had laying around and turned it into a musical instrument but you might notice all the hardware is gone it's actually in this box right over here we're gonna put that back on in just a little bit and today's video is, you know, granted I made that thing in like 10 minutes, just threw everything together. But then after I got done with it, I thought to myself, that's actually kind of a cool little design. What would I do differently if I was to do it again? And the first thing I would do is I'd put some reinforcement across the bottom because even though this is a solid board, that's a lot of tension on the board. So I took this piece of oak that I had laying around, good solid piece of oak, and I sort of glued it in there. And you can see it fit just perfectly between the feet. Now, one thing to note, because I did this with scraps, you can see these two aren't the same size and I wasn't going to take it apart and fix that. So, you know, it's not going to be perfect, but I would put that piece of oak in there. So I put that in there, um, glued it, clamped it, let it dry. In addition, this thing was in pretty rough shape. There were some knots and stuff. And um, you can see kind of like right over here, you can see where I used some wood filler to kind of fill some of that over here too. And I didn't make anything perfect because, you know, there's just, there's a lot of problems that this thing has. So I wasn't trying to make it perfect, but just fill the worst of it, make it a little bit smoother. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to paint this thing and then I'm going to put it back together. And another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a nut here. Cause if you remember before I didn't have a nut, it was just the tuner functioning as the end of the string. So I'm actually going to put a nut so I can control the scale and then maybe put in some, some uh, fret markers if I can get it to a, to a normalized scale. But uh, you know, let's do this. We're going to take and do 10 minute diddly bow part two. Okay, the paint is, uh, I'm not gonna say it's dry, but it's dry enough to handle. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And real quick, I put some little rubber feet on uh, all of these there to, to kind of uh, give it some insulation when you set it on a, on a hard surface. But uh, if you're wondering, why did he paint that thing orange? Well, there's two reasons. Number one, I had this can of orange spray paint that's been sitting here forever that I, I needed to use. And number two, have you ever seen an orange diddly bow? That's what I thought. So I grabbed one of these out of my uh, boxo parts, and this is just a corner piece that's designed, you know, to, to put like, uh, you know, at an angle as you're building something like a bookcase or whatever. Um, and I think if I put it like this, it can make a really nice nut and then have the string either go over it or possibly even through the hole, depending on how the height lines up. But I think it'll make a good nut where I don't ha won't have to rely just on the tuner to be the nut. Well, I measured and from uh, the back of the string to the nut or to the tuner, whatever you want to call it, it was about between 25 and 26 inches, which is about the size of an average guitar scale. However, I have a 23 inch fretting template. So what I'm thinking is if I move this back a little bit and I can get it to where it's about 23, then I can use that fretting template and actually put some uh, fret lines in here. So I'm going to try that. Um, let's get going putting this thing back together. Okay, so you can see how far I've gotten here. We got the tail piece back in. I guess that acts as our bridge as well. Um, I got the new nut in there. The tuner is on. And then I made all the fret lines. I used a paint pin, and then you can see I made some markings for the uh, third, fifth, seventh, etc. And uh, so, um, granted these, these paint lines aren't perfect, but they're good enough. I mean, it is an imperfect diddly bow. So I think the next thing is to get the electronics in there. Now, I, w I stopped real quick because I wanted to show you. If you remember last time, I fed the wire through and I had to actually super glue it to the bottom. And when I went to take it off with the super glue, the wire sort of came apart. I had to uh, put a little heat shrink on there to protect the uh, open areas of the of the wire, um, the, you know, the wire insulator there. 
So what I did this time is I drilled a little hole there and you can just kind of see it and it comes out underneath there, right there. So now that means the, the wire will go down through this hole and then right into this hole. And so it should keep it a lot cleaner. So let's go ahead and put the electronics back in and uh, get, getting pretty close to having this baby ready to play. There it is, the 10 minute diddly bow part two. And I guess I really can't call it the 10 minute diddly bow anymore because it's probably like a three hour diddly bow or something by now, but a good chunk of that time was just waiting for the paint to dry. Anyway, let me show you what I did here. So same basic arrangement here. Oh, by the head, we've got the single tuner. Um, and then under, and then as it comes back, I put a hook there or an eyelet there for the string to go through. And then up over that little L bracket um, to, to act as a nut. Now I did attempt to try to run it through the, through the, one of these holes in the L bracket or whatever you want to call it, the corner bracket. And it, it wasn't, the height wasn't right. So I had to come up with something different. So that's what I came up with there. Then as we come down, we've got all of our fret, 24 frets marked there. And you can see on the 12th and 24th, I did uh, the markings on both sides to indicate the octaves there. Um, if we get to here, same kind of arrangement. We've got the pickup and then we've got the hook here, the jack plate on the jack. But if you look now, uh, there's no glue on this. That's just how it naturally goes. So because of that hole running the, the wire through there now, everything is all nice and tight. Uh, here we go. Here is kind of the... Uh, the set of improvements to the 10 minute diddly bow and and i actually think this is gonna be a really sweet instrument so one thing left to do let me go grab an amp let's plug it in okay so here we go we got the new orange diddly bow and what should we plug that into how about an orange amp why not that seems logical doesn't it okay so let's bring the volume up on the amp here sounds pretty mean so i got a guitar slide and a screwdriver Let me show you guys something real quick. So, if I do this, hopefully you can pick up, there's a lot of hum happening there. And that's probably an indicator of a bad ground. Maybe I'll do another video about exactly how you fix this, but I can show you how to diagnose it real quick. Take an alligator clip here, clip it onto your jack plate, and then touch it. And I, hopefully you can hear that on the camera, but what happens is when I touch it, that hum pretty much goes away. And that tells me that I don't have a good ground. Um, like I said, you can fix that permanently by, by adding a wire, but, um, if you need to fix it temporarily, like if you have a show to play and you have that happening, like I said, clip your alligator clip on your jack here and then take the other end and just put it between your, put it between your skin and your clothes. Bam. Hum gone. Like what i do on this channel please hit that thumbs up button for me and if you like my video i'd really appreciate it if you would go ahead and subscribe for me see you guys soon